So today I will share with you some thoughts on weaning premature infants with NAVA. I will first say a few words on uh, how the, uh, or what are the current trends in uh, neonatal ventilatory care and then uh, compare the weaning in traditional style to NAVA style and uh, at the end I will have a short case report on a premature infant uh, I met a few weeks ago. The surfactant therapy has uh, become generally used and is a very uh, efficient uh, 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 therapy for the RDS of newborn infants. Simultaneously, the, um, uh, the using of uh, patient triggered modes has been uh, more and more uh, used also in neonatal uh, patients. And, and altogether, uh, today, the duration of invasive ventilation is very short. <coughs> Here in this table, you see uh, unpublished data on a prospective survey which we carried out in Finland in uh, 2010. And as you can see, the median time of invasive ventilation uh, varies from less than a day to three days. And this has led to a situation that actually the weaning is an ongoing process that begins with intubation. Traditionally, we have weaned the, the babies by uh, lowering the frequency of mandatory breaths and reducing the pressure support. And we have seen the decrease in uh, oxygen need uh, along improvement in the pulmonary status. In our survey 2010, we asked whether there are any uh, uh, commonly accepted uh, extubation criteria used in uh, Finnish uh, neonatal intensive care units and several clinicians responded that they use these criteria for extubation. Regular spontaneous breathing, preset frequency 20 per minute, peak inspiratory pressure from 16 to 18 water centimeters, and a fraction of inspired oxygen less than 30 to 40 percent. Well, uh, a question could be asked whether we could use the same uh, extubation criteria also when we use NAVA. Well, I think the answer is quite obvious for all of us now, but uh, I must admit that in, in the beginning we made this mistake once or twice, since it is uh, quite often seen that when you change the child from controlled ventilation to NAVA, the peak inspiratory pressure is uh, sharply uh, decreased. Also, there's a decrease in the need of oxygen. And of course, it's easy to notice that there's this regular spontaneous breathing uh, present when, when you use NAVA. This uh, naturally does not mean that, that the condition is lungs has immedi immediately uh, get uh, better uh, with the change in the ventilation mode. So I think we need to remember this when, when starting to use NAVA with these patients who actually have uh, not so uh, healthy lungs. But because we see these uh, things when uh, we use NAVA, I think NAVA is an excellent weaning mode for these premature infants. The weaning with NAVA uh, starts with making yourself very well familiar with your patient. It is important to understand the big picture in terms of child's clinical condition, knowing how the x-rays are, how are the blood gases, and how uh, many apneas the child has. Uh, the weaning in general is done by reducing the NAVA level step by step, and roughly it could be said that when the EDI max is over 15 uh, microvolts, the NAVA level should not be reduced. And when below 5 or below 10, you may reduce uh, the support. <coughs> also, the apnea time is uh, adjustable and should always be uh, adjusted uh, individually. And uh, typically, uh, you can increase the apnea time while the weaning proceeds. One should not forget also to reduce the backup settings and pressure support, because uh, more than once I've seen a situation that uh, if there are set, uh, these backup settings or pressure support is uh, from 
two or three days ago, and, and the pulmonary status is better, and for some reason the child starts to trigger the pressure support, she won't be able to get back to NAVA because with a too high pressure support the EDI goes away. So you need to always do this, uh, also check these backup settings too. Another thing which we should not forget is that the, there are many factors affecting the EDI signal. Uh, quite uh, typically you can see there this kind of cyclic pattern in the EDI even though uh, the NAVA level is not changed. And this uh, often follows the activity level of the baby. In addition, uh, pain, discomfort or crying may increase the EDI uh, a lot, but, but that increase in EDI does not require any change in NAVA level. Thus, we need to be careful not to oversimplify the instructions for changing NAVA level at certain levels of EDI. Another question uh, that I've heard often is uh, what's the what is the right uh, NAVA level before extubation? When, when the child is ready to be extubated? Is it 0 0.5 water centimeters per microvolt? I think this is uh, the most a common answer when, when I've been uh, uh, talking with other people. But uh, I'm sure that there's a group of patients to whom this NAVA level is absolutely too low. And those are the the most premature and weakest infants who suffer from the increased work of breathing caused by endotracheal tube uh, resistance and who are not uh, able to breathe through the tube uh, without any support. So too low NAVA level should not be used as we are not using CPAP for them while intubated. The right time for extubation needs to be evaluated by using uh, the, the, all the clinical signs. How stable is the child? Is there any signs of fatigue in the trends of, uh, in, in EDI? And uh, also how much uh, the backup uh, child has needed. Nowadays we have uh, this Nivnava option after uh, extubation and, and we use it quite a lot for the, the smallest uh, children. Then I will shortly present you a patient case. It's a baby girl born at 24 plus one weeks of gestation. She was intubated in the delivery room and uh, received the first dose of uh, surfactant at four minutes of age. She needed invasive ventilation for three days, um, of which the last day was uh, done in NAVA uh, as a weaning mode. Uh, this is a quite a normal protocol in our unit nowadays, that we use NAVA before extubation just to make a clear impression on how the baby is breathing. She was extubated to NIVNAVA, but uh, after a day, started to have deep apneas and uh, there was an increase in need of oxygen and finally she needed reintubation after uh, 36 hours after the uh, extubation. Para influenza was found to be the reason for this sudden deterioration and here you can see the thorax x-ray there's uh, quite a lot atelectasis and not much air in the lungs so no uh, so it's uh, understandable that she was not able to breathe without uh, invasive support. For the next 12 days, uh, she was uh, ventilated with uh, pressure-controlled ventilation and NAVA alternately. And gra gradually she got better. Here is the X-ray two days after re-intubation and, and this is just before the weaning was started. Probably some of you may agree with me that uh, as seeing this latter picture, uh, we should uh, hurry a bit to get her extubated since the lungs seems to be a little, uh, bit over distended. 
She was treated with PC before this uh, weaning decision. And as you can see, there's a, a total asynchrony. This, it was in, uh, impossible for, to find the correct pneumatic trigger level for this tiny uh, child. Because with uh, flow trigger 4, she was unable to uh, initiate the support. And with flow trigger 5, the uh, auto-triggering occurred. This is quite a common problem with uh, the smallest children because they have high respiratory rates, small tidal volumes, and uh, they are not strong enough to uh, trigger the ventilator. We changed her to NAVA, and uh, NAVA level 1.2 was estimated and used, and uh, synchrony was found, and we had planned to win her step by step, but uh, during NAVA, she demonstrated uh, frequent apneas of premature infants and uh, she needed backup ventilation uh, very frequently. But as you can see, those apneas result with a few mandatory breaths. Uh, in, in this case, after the third breath, uh, the EDI comes alive and, and spontaneous breathing is restored. So the next day we still had a NAVA level well over 0.5 quarter centimeters. Uh, but uh, when we uh, as, uh, evaluated the child's clinical condition, we found that she was very uh, active, uh, she was awake, and uh, the mucus uh, received by suction from the intubation tubes, uh, uh, the, the amount of it had reduced. And um, when uh, also Checking the ventilatory parameters, we saw quite a regular pattern in spite of these frequent apneas, which we obviously had noticed already. So all in all, we decided to extubate her to uh, biphasic nasal CPAP, and we did with success. And here you can see um, the EDI pattern after extubation. This is the time for extubation. And as you can see, immediately after uh, extubation, there is a quite high level of uh, EDI. I think there was uh, some, something around 45 uh, microvolts or so for a while. But then it uh, came down to uh, the, this level, and I think the, this is quite an acceptable level. She continued to have those apneas and, and has been treated with... Uh, CPAP and NIVNAVA alternately during the last few weeks, but uh, not yet needed any uh, reintubation. So, uh, as a conclusion, I would like to say that NAVA is an excellent tool in weaning premature infants from respiratory support since it gives us profound information on how the baby is breathing. Thank you.